everyone. Wow, it's been a second since I just sat down and did a informational video. So, hello. And if you only tune in for my informational videos and less about my vlogs and documenting my sugar glider life, basically, uh, I'm sorry, because it's, it's been a bit. But other than that, I'm just going to get started with the video for today, which is drum roll, please. I don't know why I did that. Sorry, I'm excited. So this is all going to be about toy safety. Now, I just, I know in advance that I'm going to forget something because toy safety is a really, really big topic, but I'm gonna do my best to make this as comprehensive as possible. And I have gotten quite a few different sources for this information. So in the description box, I'm going to drop some, uh, some recommended groups that really talk about toy safety a lot, uh, some people specifically that admin those groups that talk about toy safety. So I will try to give credit where credit is due, but it's kind of an accumulation of a lot of different places. So when I was new in uh, owning sugar gliders, I didn't really realize that many things that are advertised as safe for sugar gliders are actually not, unfortunately. It's really sad. The retail market is kind of saturated with a lot of things that they say, oh, this is for sugar gliders, but really it's for birds or it's for hamsters or whatever, and they're just trying to tack on one extra animal that they can sell uh, just for material gain, basically. So you have to be really careful just because something says that it's sugar glider safe does not mean that it actually is. So that's a big reason why I'm doing this video. One very common thing that is sold a lot that is not sugar glider safe is uh, pouches or cage items that are sewn that have exposed seams. If a seam is exposed, you need to be able to not stick a toothpick underneath the stitching. So there are some materials that need to be stitched in such a way that it, it, it can still be safe, but the stitching has to be so tight together that you wouldn't be able to stick a toothpick underneath. So if you have an item that you've already purchased and you say, oh, I know it had, I saw some seams, I saw some stitching, um, but you're not sure if it's safe or not, then try the toothpick test. Otherwise, I would just really advocate that you purchase from vendors that are trusted and recommended. I do have quite a few vendors on videos about different vendors that I personally recommend. Another big thing that is sold a lot online that is, you know, sold for sugar gliders, but it's actually not, is anything that's made out of a rope. Um, there's quite a few rope toys that are not safe. There's also a lot of sugar glider wheels that are not safe. I'm not going to go into, I could do a whole video on sugar glider wheels. Uh, so I'm not going to go into all of that. And I personally like custom choice cruisers. The main thing that you're looking for when you're looking at a wheel is that you want an open track so that the poop and pee can fall out and you don't want a middle bar sticking out because as the glider jumps in the wheel, and I have other videos on this, they can hit their back, they can wrap their tail around that bar, their patagium can get wrapped around that bar, and gliders have actually died because of this. Stella, why do you, why you wanna be on my back? Come to me. Don't come to me, just stay on my back. That's fine, I guess. I'm, and then I'm gonna talk more about toys and things that you might make yourself. I have a whole playlist of uh, toy making things. So I'll include that in the description box as well. The description box on this video is gonna be nice and packed, but that's okay. Um, I wanna make sure those resources are easily available to you guys. As a general rule of thumb, the whole size for any toy should be either smaller than a half an inch so the glider can't actually get in there. You know, it's like, just like the bar spacing on a, on a cage is supposed to be half an inch or smaller. If it's, so it's either needs to be smaller than a half an inch, but not so small that they could actually slip their little paw in there. You, there's kind of a little bit of a gray area there. You need to make sure you're um, using your own discretion with that. Or it needs to be larger than two and two and a quarter or two and a half inches. The, the, there's kind of a debate on whether it's two and a quarter or two and a half. 
uh, inches that the, the hole needs to be bigger than so that they can't possibly get stuck. If it's anything in the middle there, the glider could possibly get their head in or half their body in, but then not be able to get out. And gliders will actually self mutilate. If they get to a point where they're stuck, they can panic and actually chew off a limb. Yeah, it can be bad. That's why you wanna make sure you're measuring things. So this is a toy that I purchased off of Amazon. And I'm not recommending this toy because I feel like, oh my goodness, Pika. Hold on, you, you stop, you stop, you come see me. Everything is fine, everything is fine. You come and see me. Come here, you're all right. You're okay, nothing bad is happening to you. You're gonna poop on me, that's nice of you. You just wanna be with your friends, huh? So don't leave me alone. I'm gonna clean up that poop. Sure, lighters poop a lot, I tell ya. I purchased this toy off of Amazon because I was thinking it would be a cool one to have in the cage. I'm not gonna put it in the cage, but I did keep it just to show you guys the potential problem with this. So, do you see how this, this part goes around? At first I thought, well, maybe I can just tighten it, but you can't because this right here tightens, but that doesn't have anything to do with this silver, or this silver, this clear piece. And this opening, See how it kind of flares up like that? I feel like a hand could potentially get stuck in there, especially because this is a treat foraging type toy. It's supposed to secure onto the side of the cage and then it, you, they rotate, you know, they work it around and there's different compartments for, for treats. But I f this, this flares up on the sides enough. If this was flush on here, then I wouldn't have a problem with it. The whole size is not ideal and it has this gap here. So that's a good example of something I would not feel comfortable putting in the cage. Like these baskets, let's just use our measurements that we already learned and figure out if this basket is safe. So the largest hole in this basket is half an inch wide, okay? And the smallest hole is about a quarter of an inch wide. The, the smallest hole is not big enough for a paw to fit through. And the largest hole is not big enough for a head to fit through. So we are safe with this box. There's no toys in there, I know. Darn it. He's just sure that something exciting, it must be happening if I have all of his toys out. Okay, if you're gonna have fake flowers in your toy, you need to make sure they don't have any metal in them that they don't, uh, the dye does not bleed and that they don't fray when you pull on it. So I have personally never just gone and bought toys that have, or gone and bought fake flowers because it's really, really hard to find things that are in that parameter, in my experience anyway. And also sometimes you don't really know if it has metal in it until you've already purchased it and brought it home. But this is from the Shuggy Flower Fairy. She uses fake stuff in hers all the time. Now, when you pull on it, it doesn't really fray, you know, so that passes that inspection. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna, if you are gonna buy them, make sure they don't have any metal in there and make sure that you wash them in hot water and see if they bleed. If they, you know, if the dyes run off, that's probably not gonna be the best thing to put into your cage. The other thing that people like to buy is feathers. So, I, I personally don't buy feathers that have dyes just because for using them as uh, toy box foraging items, I think you can get naturally co colored feathers and it works just fine. So like these, I got all these at Hobby Lobby. These are just regular feathers. They're not, you know, bright pink or bright, bright blue or whatever. And gliders really do like feathers. And it's not that you can't use uh, dyed feathers but I would definitely wash them in really, really hot water first, see if they bleed. If they do and you can't get them to stop bleeding, you probably shouldn't use them in your cage, in my opinion. Now this, so this is a toy that I got at a thrift store. You know, you can get a big toy like this. This is a great floor toy for like $3. You know, you don't need to buy things um, first, you know, firsthand. Second hand is really the way to go with glider items. So as you can see, the holes in here, just measure these. 
So this is big enough for them to fit through. He went back in his bag. So the window holes are a half an inch wide. So those are safe. The openings of the doors are plenty big. Those are two and a half inches. Well, this one's, this one's two and a half inches. This one is like three and a half. If you go to a, like a um, second hand store or something and you get some, a toy like this, this is great. It had um, some stuff on here, some like was supposed to look like flooring. And I took that and used Goo Gone and got that all scraped off so that they didn't peel it up and eat it um, or, you know, ingest it. Uh, and then these had, this was kind of a smaller opening here. So I just took a Dremel and I made this opening quite a bit bigger and then sanded this down. So this is smooth. This toy also had moving parts. So that's the other thing you want to be careful of. This had an elevator going up and down and their tails and stuff can get stuck in the moving parts. So you really need to think through like, okay, what could, what could possibly happen with this toy, right? So I just removed the elevator because I thought it was safer. If you have like a, a car or something like that, that has moving wheels, you, oh, it's okay, Pika. You need to secure the wheels so that the, they can't get their tail or something wrapped around that moving part. So see how, you know, a tail could get stuck in there and then wrapped around and that could be, they could chew off their tail. So I need to, before I put this in the cage, this is going to be like a little toy ball pit, but I need to secure these wheels. I'll probably do a tutorial when I do that on how I end up doing that. You want to make sure you have all of those things in mind when you're picking a floor toy. No moving parts. If it has batteries and metal and stuff like that, you want to take those out um, and then measuring the holes. If you're wondering if something's kind of on like the edge, put it in with, with the glider in like a, a tent or some supervised play where you can see the glider go in and out and make sure that it's, you know, it's something that they're not gonna get stuck in. So if there's any gray area in any of those things, I recommend watching your glider play with it for quite a while before putting it in the cage unsupervised. When you're talking about buying materials and stuff like that for your gliders, the easiest thing is just to get anti-pill fleece. There are a couple other things that you could buy material wise, but that for just the average person, unless you're gonna be a vendor, and I'm not gonna speak to that person, just getting anti-pill fleece is really a great way to go because it's easy to use. You can cut it, you can tie it, you can do all kinds of stuff. Now, when you're tying fleece, I will talk about this real quick. Hold on one second. Okay, so I'm working on a design for a pouch that is a DIY. But the reason why I haven't done a video on that yet is because I am still tweaking it to make sure it's actually safe. I never wanna put something on my channel and then afterwards realize that it's not safe. This is a, a pouch that I made and I made one similar that's in a different, some other videos you may have seen that it was uh, blue and it had these hangy down things and it was beautiful and my gliders loved it. But the problem is that when you have fleece and you tie it in knots, as it wears, the fleece pulls and then it creates little gaps in between the knots. So this I tied super, super good, very, very thorough, multiple knots. However, when I was inspecting it after I washed it, I realized that there's some spots in here that there's starting to become some separation between the knots. And I don't want a head to get stuck in there and then not to be able to pull it out and they die, right? That would be terrible. So for that reason, I am just gonna cut this apart and use it for scraps. Because really, at the end of the day, if something's not safe, it really shouldn't be in the cage. There's plenty of safe things that you can use. You don't have to take that risk. So the wear and tear on this was not long-term good. Another example of that is the no sew bra pouch that I have made and I have a tutorial on how to make. I'm gonna grab one. Okay, so these no sew bra pouches, I have had and washed quite a few times. Now you notice that in here, these knots were nice and tight together, um, but because this was not made for in-cage use, I didn't really worry too much about that because I was it was always gonna be on my person. But you can see that after you have washed it a few times, there have become holes, this is my finger, between the knots, which is fine when you're talking about a no-sew bra pouch, because actually, 
it lets them smell your smell even more. Um, some people have taken a little strip of fleece and weaved it in and out of the holes to, to make it solid. I still would not ever put this in the cage though because they could pull that fleece out and then you still have the same problem, okay? Again, this is, the, this is my first one I think that I made. And the more that you wash it, the more you're gonna get these holes between the knots. So that's why I recommend just buying pouches from vendors that are approved safe vendors for these cute little sugar gliders. Yes, yes. So one thing with toy making specifically is you wanna make sure you're using the right materials and that those materials have been properly prepped. So for example, you might be using things like these uh, C-links. You might be using things like these, which are mini links. And all of your charms, C-links and mini links are gonna come with little barbs because they're made in a big long mold. And so they all have these connecting pieces. So you need to file those down or you need to cut them with flush cutters. So you can't just buy the materials from a vendor and then assemble your toy without prepping each item. So your C-links, mini links, charms, and your chain all need to be prepped. We talked about that in other videos. I won't spend a lot of time on it, but I wanna show you, this is one toy that I made when I was first starting making toys. And since then, I haven't really put it in the cage because I really need to go back over it and, um, and do all of those deburring things that I didn't do because I didn't know about that. I, I was all excited because I learned how to, you know, drill holes and I bought all these supplies, but I never heard anybody say that you had to prep the items before you actually, uh, assembled it. So I need to go back through. I made that, you know, probably four years ago. I need to go back through and um, deburr all of those things. So, so that's one main thing is the prepping of the materials. I thought you wanted to go away. You don't wanna go away? So if you use zip ties to secure things, make sure that those are all um, cut flush and sanded down if there's any rough edges. If you can run your finger across it and you can feel that that's kind of rough, you need to make sure that's sanded down. Also, these mini links here, these are non weight bearing items. So you don't want to string a bunch of these mini links together and then hang something that you're intending for the glider to hang on or that they could hang on. They really are basically only used to hang charms. If you're using them for anything besides that, that's not safe. Yeah, so mini links are not weight bearing and they should not be used to attach anything except for charms, like I said. So they shouldn't be used to attach chain to a toy. So like if you have a toy, so say when I made this pulley toy, if I wanted to attach this bracelet onto the bottom of this chain, I could not use a mini link for that. You could use, so I cannot use one of these. I could use one of these with a link lock to secure it, or you can use a zip tie and then file the zip tie down or snip it with flush cutters. And if you're going to take some of these C-links, sometimes people will make chain out of these C-links, which is fine, but you have to make sure that you've secured and closed the link locks. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if you wanted to make a chain like this with these C-links, you can buy these C-links on Amazon or something similar, not these specific colors, but you can buy something similar on Amazon. You need a link lock. Now there's quite a few different styles of link locks that you could get. One, the cheapest is to get some straws and cut them down to pieces like this that then slide in to this C-link and lock it. So now they can't come apart, right? You could also get link locks from a vendor. They look more like this. They're more of a solid plastic. Uh, they're more of a solid plastic and they look like that. Okay, so if you're gonna do, or you can also get uh, some rubber tubing. Some people have gotten rubber tubing from like um, an aqu the aquatic, like aquatic rubber tubing and made their own little see-through link locks. That's totally fine too, um, but they need to be uh, locked. So if you're gonna have a big long 
thing of those sea links hanging down in your cage, maybe with a bracelet on the bottom or something like that, they need to be locked because as the glider climbs on it and plays with it, they can become unlinked and then that can become unsafe because uh, they could fall, obviously. That is, you are just in a playful mood, aren't you? Are you just so excited to be on Mama? As you're making a toy, if you uh, are securing it with a zip tie and you realize that it created a little bit of a gap in the toy, you can always stick a, a mini link in there, in that gap, and then that will allow for it to not have a like a big enough space to um, have a, whole, a toe stick in there. So like this toy right here has a zip tie right there. If I felt like that gap was too big and I could stick a mini link in there, it, it's it's small enough that I can't really, but say that, say that I could, uh, you could, you could stick this little mini link in the gap there of the zip tie so that a toe can't get stuck in there. If the gap is too small for even a mini link to stick in there, then you're probably fine. You just don't want any holes that their little paw could get stuck in and then they can't pull it out. Um, bad things happen when that happens. When you're buying chain, plastic chain for your toys, three millimeter is the smallest that you can get actually weight bearing. So if something's gonna be hanging on it, you're hanging something heavy on it, three millimeter is the, the, the um, smallest. So this is the smallest chain that you would use. There is two millimeter that's great for like pulleys, but not to hang a toy with. You can also go all the way up to eight millimeter, but anything above that, uh, the glider can actually get in the opening or and get stuck. So this is two millimeter chain. So this is not weight bearing, but it's great for like pulleys, but you wouldn't be able to hang the toy from the two millimeter chain. So this right here is three millimeter chain because it's weight bearing. This is two millimeter chain because it's for a pulley. That's that with the chain. So that's my toy safety video. I hope that was helpful. If you buy something from a vendor, you should still inspect it and make sure that it actually is safe. And now, you, now that you know what makes a toy safe and not safe, you'll be able to inspect it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you have questions or you have extra things that I forgot to include for toy safety, please drop them in the description, or not in the description box. You don't have access to the description box, only I do. In the comments, please put them in the comments so that people can see those. Let me see if I can get Pika out one more time so you can see her progress. She's doing so stinking good. For those of you who have not been following my journey with Pika. You probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but she's my new rehome. She was very, very crabby and pouch protective and she lunged at me multiple times and was very, very hard to handle. But now we are just doing great. Aren't you Pika girl? Aren't you? I don't know that she loves me yet, but she's definitely learning to trust me. Yeah. There's a Pika girl. Huh? What is sweet. She loves being a part of her colony. She, and that, that's, a, that's why she's like obsessed right now to get back in with her, with her friends. Aw, that's right. Good girl. Okay, let's say goodbye. I got the pika on my head. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. And I'll be seeing you soon with another video. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys.